Hello friends, let's continue our exploration of the stock market using Python and Matplotlib. Today we're going to compare retail numbers with the S&P 500. Remember, this is only for entertainment uh, and shouldn't be seen as uh, advice in any shape or form. I'm neither licensed nor certified to give out advice. So. Uh, but I've been spend I spent 20 uh, 20 years programming and six of those as a quant on a trading desk on Wall Street So I really love this stuff and I like to understand things myself um, So far we looked at the VIX we've looked at uh, long-term short-term interest rates and we looked at unemployment numbers So going to retail is just kind of a another uh, Point of data to look at and to try to understand our markets better. Welcome to Viral ML. My name is Manuel Amunategui. I'm the author of Monetizing Machine Learning for those who are interested in extending machine learning models all the way to the web. Uh, this book is for you and I have other, uh, a few other self-published books on, uh, on Amazon. Please check them out. Um, uh, also sign up for my newsletter at viralml.com. Uh, you'll see there is a link on the, on the front page. So I like retail numbers because in my mind, it's a leading indicator. Though the jury's out, people think it's lagging or leading. It all depends. Do you think people uh, stop spending when before the market's crashing or they stop spending after the market has crashed? I think we stop spending before. Like right now, there's a little uh, you know, uh, worry in the markets and I've stopped spending or I'm definitely watching my expenses more closely. But the bottom line, it doesn't matter if you think it's uh, leading, lagging, we don't understand. The real thing to do is to roll up your sleeves and dig into the data and find out. So before I jump into getting our da data like we normally do uh, using Yahoo Finance, let me give you a little background as to why I thought about uh, retail numbers. Um, I found this uh, index called the Hot Waitress Economic Index. And I know it's a bit uh, of a joke, a bit funny, but there is some truth in it. It says that in bad economic times, we tend to see better looking waiters and waitresses than in good economic times. And it just seems that, um, you know, if the economic times are really good, you know, uh, people go into sales, there's a lot of jobs, and when they're bad, there's a lot more competition for, you know, for uh, any job. And uh, if you have a restaurant or a bar, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna choose better looking people over people that look like me, right? So I couldn't find this data set, uh, though it's interesting. Uh, I tried to find what is the closest thing. Well, there are two things. Let me just jump to the, the notepad, uh, Jupyter Notebook, which is included, the link is there. Uh, two, uh, I would have liked to have found a, a luxury ETF. So I did find one, the Amundi uh, ETF, uh, symbol GLUX. The problem, it was a bit sporadic. I didn't find enough data. So the next best thing was the, the Spider S&P Retail ETF, which has uh, uh, better, more data and uh, you know, uh, better quality. So we're gonna go with those. So um, as usual, Go to, um, you know, go to, let's, let me just walk you through here. Uh, go to Yahoo Finance, enter, uh, in this case, XRT, which it should be the Spider uh, S&P Retail uh, ETF. Go to uh, Historic Data. Click the date range, go Max, Done, Apply, and Download. And that's gonna download, um, in this case, data for the XRT from 2006 to, to today, or to the last trading day. And do the same thing for GSPC, which is the S&P 500. So let me go back to the summary so you see where it is. Here it is. Um, S&P 500, uh, carat GSPC, go to historical data, click uh, the date range, go max, done. And this is gonna give you data all the way from 1950, so a lot of data. Apply, and then download. Make sure you uh, point the Jupyter Notebook to wherever uh, Yahoo uh, downloaded those files or move those files to the appropriate folders. And now we're gonna pull them. In this case, I also pulled Glux, uh, glux.mi. You can do it, you don't have to do it, it's up to you. I'll just show you what I meant by uh, not good quality. Uh, so we know that the uh, we have a lot of data for the S&P 500 since 1950, but unfortunately XRT only goes to, to, to this date, right? This is the first date in the head, so we're gonna have to cap our data to that date. That's what I'm gonna do. So let's see, XRT going on from 2006, looks good. This is the Glux, so the, uh, the luxury ETF, and as you can see, it's very spotty. It's not gonna help us out. We can't really work with that. And of course, GSPC, the S&P 500, we've worked through it throughout all these videos, so we know we're good there. Okay, uh, this, is, this is handy in case um, you, know, you, have, you, want, you have outliers in your data. 
It's uh, something I pulled from a Stack Overflow and it's going to look at uh, the standard deviation of the uh, close, the adjusted close in this, in this, uh, in this case. I'm going to do anything that's beyond or larger than three times the standard deviation uh, the, over the mean is considered an outlier you, you must throw out. But in this case we have nothing, right? Three times we have nothing. Let's see if we have anything under two times standard deviation. Still nothing. And let's see for one time, which I think we have everything, right? Everything is within one standard deviation, and that's that's good data. But we're like looking at anything like a three or four. Those are outliers or, or erroneous data, and you would want to remove them. You need to clean that out. Okay. Next, we're going to join both data sets because we're going to do some math on these different columns. So we're going to bring everything into one new data set called Together, where we're going to merge our SMP uh, 500 date. Uh, the adjusted close by date with the XRT, the retail ETF by date as well. And that's going to allow us to make sure that we have, if in case we had uh, the S&P 500 that didn't have an entry in the other one, we're going to drop them. We want to make sure we always have one date and one entry for both of the ETFs that we're looking at. And that's what it's going to do. We join them, basically doing like a join like you do with uh, uh, SQL. And now we have this. This is what our new data set looks like. The date. Uh, the close for the GSPC, uh, the S&P 500, and the close for the XRT, the retail ETF. So as you can see, we have different values. The S&P 500 is in the, the thousands, while the XRT is in the teens. We're going to have to clean that up a bit. First thing we're going to do is simply plot them. We're just going to plot the uh, S&P 500 with the XRT on their own scale. So both will have their own Y scale. And like that, we can quickly visualize how they are. And that's what we're going to do. That's always a good first step. And here we have it, right? We do see that um, there are some similarities, but there are some differences as well. Keep in mind, you can't really compare them. Like you can't compare where they cross or whatnot, because it's just matplotlib that decides how it's going to plot each one on its own scale. But we're going to clean them up and we're going to try to bring them together on a similar scale to, to get some, to infer some of that. Um, so we're, we're going to create a difference. We're going to take the percentage change of the spiders. So whenever a spider goes out, let's say up 1%, up 2%, we're going to take that percentage change and we're going to subscri uh, subtract it against the, the percentage change of the uh, S&P 500. And now we have a new column. So it's going to be very small and very hard to, to, to work with. Um, if I, um, actually I'm repeating this twice. We don't need that one here. We already have it. If we, um, if we just look at the diff without doing this, let's, let me just plot them so you can see how it looks, right? This is the percentage change of the retail minus the S&P 500. It's just a lot of noise, just a lot of lines, right? And I'm overlaying against the S&P 500. So, cause we're always comparing things against the S&P 500. Cause remember it's kind of the litmus test. It's kind of the, the overall health of the world market. The S&P 500 represents the largest 500 companies uh, in the U S but they're international companies. Most of them that it represents really uh, the, the health of the world. So this is unusable, right? There's not much you can do. Oh, it is interesting to see a spike in this market crash in 2008. Um, and uh, you know, uh, not as not as spiky uh, elsewhere. But regardless, it's not very useful. That's why I am going to add to the diff a rolling average of 50 periods. So I'm going to smooth the data using 50 periods, averaging it out and rolling that as we go along and taking that mean value. And now it's going to be a lot more interesting to look at. Look at that, right? So what I see here, and I'm also plotting the zero line. So now we've kind of created an indicator which is the, uh, the retail minus the S&P 500, and it's gonna oscillate around the zero line. So what I see here is in the economic boom of 2009 to you know, practically uh, today, but it looks like more like till 2014, from 2009 to 2014, most of the differences, right? The, the retail was a lot stronger than the S&P 500. So it was trading above, meaning people were spending money. Retail was working well. And then it kind of slowed down and you can see, for example, uh, here, this is an interesting period here, 2015, let's say 2000, mid 2015 to 2018, let's say, it was clearly uh, below the S&P 500. Most of the, the lines were under zero, meaning that retail was weaker than the S&P 500. And it does translate, right? It slows down, right? It's interesting to see that uh, right around 2008, beginning of 2018, there was a, a spike in retail, pushed the markets you know, up. 
and now we're back a very thick clump under zero right so right now that's where we are right now there is a bit of people like i said we're not you know spending as much money there's a lot of uncertainty uncertainty that's when we tighten our walls that's when retail feels the pinch right so here we basically created a very interesting indicator i mean it doesn't prove or disprove whether it's a leading or a lagging indicator it just proves that you know in when the markets are tanking it does look like here right clearly a big chunk of time under the zero line and the market just started tanking though uh, there were some uh, some wide moves and look at that a huge spike up where retail just just exploded and the market started turning around right so very interesting stuff i think the retail numbers are fascinating it clearly is um, a representation of the markets overall and the people who are shopping who are selling who are buying within that uh in the retail world okay one more thing this is even more um experimental i'm going to take every move the xrt the spider does upwards i give it a one every time it makes a move downwards i give it a negative one and i do the same thing for the s p 500. i'm really trying to get them on the exact same scale sometimes the percentage change is still different enough that it's hard to put them on the same scale but with a plus one minus one maybe it'll be a little bit better so let's play around with this um, I'm going to, to create these a new uh, feature in a data frame of together called XRT underscore move and GSPC underscore move. If it goes up a uh, uh, percentage, up it gets a one, down it gets a negative one. And if I run this, we now have a very interesting chart which shows uh, the S&P 500 is in blue and we see that the retail seems to be leading in some cases a down market and um well actually i need to uh, let's overlay on its own axis so remember now we have both these moves on their same axis i should have emphasized that's important and we're putting the s p 500 on its own axis right here just to, as an overlay to understand what's going on so here clearly s p 500 tanked right this was in 2008 and we see that the retail was definitely lower than um and the S&P 500. So I would say retail was leading. Uh, was a leading indicator in this case. And let's look at here another crash here. Here we see that uh, it almost looks like it's the um, the S&P 500 is leading the crash over retail, right? So retail was surprised by it, uh, though it was not a very big crash. And let's see here. Another crash. So this was happened, you know, like um, since you know January, February, the market crash that we're a little crash that we've seen uh, recently, and we see, um, and here we see the S and P five hundred is leading uh, uh, the retail uh, XRT. So jury is a mix, and you're often going to find this, right? If it's a very clear, very easy rule, you're probably looking at it wrong, or it's too simplistic. Keep in mind that everybody's after the market. Everybody's looking at, you know, they have, you know, departments, huge buildings of PhDs just looking at this type of data. Very, very hard to gain. Very, very hard to, to find an edge. So uh, I was hoping to see something clearer. I was hoping to see always retail leading, and it could also be with my math, right? This, this plus one, minus one, maybe just too generic, may, may remove too much of the noise. Uh, may or, or may you know may, uh, may ignore too much of the moves right and that's why it's not not incorrect but here you saw a few different ways of creating indicators using data and especially rolling up our sleeves and playing with it ourselves so we can understand what's going on and we can make our own decision decide what, what's best for us or at the very at the very least to understand what's going on in uh in today's market so this is definitely the chart i prefer and we looked at because i can clearly see uh up markets you see the retail uh is definitely leading down markets here we see retail is uh underneath right uh definitely uh you clearly see that market goes down retail people don't buy uh market goes up people buy so i really like this i'm going to spend some time i'm going to think about it a bit more um, and uh kind of keep you know uh rolling up my tape my, my sleeves and discovering more about, about the markets. And I recommend you do the same thing. Thanks for watching.